Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to deep dive into some AWS stuff. This video is a part of Uber Eats clone and we are planning to build an infrastructure through AWS CDK. So in the last video I talked about what is AWS CDK and how this AWS CDK can help developers to build the infrastructure on AWS either deploying a microservice or either deploying a front-end app which is just a plain react app or uh, another application like server side rendered application to a lambda edge function so these are the all the aspects we are going to explore through this aws cdk workshop cdk is a cloud development kit provided by aws to the developers so they can write their code and can deploy the application by creating the stack and the constructs so this is my root account i mean uh, i'm just just showcasing how it really works you need to have a aws account and to access AWS, how you can access AWS through this UI console, the nice and clean UI console through programmatic access using AWS CLI or through these, uh, these AWS CDK kit. What you need is you need to have access key and the secret key. So you need to keep those keys safe within yourself. Don't share it with anyone. Otherwise, they can access your AWS console and can create unnecessary resources. Then you will get the billing. That's not good okay so this is my root account what i will do is i will sign out a root account because i can access the billing how to check if this is my root account i always go to the billing and see if i can access the the billing section yes then this is my root account and uh, i can access my iam identity access management and i can see the number of users i have in my account and i can also check the security of my account mfa is enabled is the root user and I have only one user so I will just do the logout and try to log in with that sign into the console and here I will just use I am user okay I'm tr this is also MFA enabled even the administrator account this is like uh, there is a root account and then I have created a, another administrator user so I always use this administrator user to access my account And here we are we are able to log in after doing a couple of demos i will remove this user because i'm exposing a lot of my information through this account so this is my administrator account and here i can not be able to see the billing console let's see and then we will just explore a little bit about all the aws services like i am i am is identity and access management you can actually manage the the number of users currently i do have only one user we will create one sandbox user and we will play with that sandbox user. We will just give a couple of permissions. So I am not going to talk about the basic fundamentals. Okay, how to work with the AWS console. There are thousands of the videos already available. You can just play and play with them. Or you can just create a, you can just create a new user, add it to the role group and all those things you can do. So currently we don't have any role group. I can create a simple role group. Sandbox users. And I will also add this TK Sharma to that user and I can attach a policy. Administrator access. So here I will give administrator access that is like a full access on AWS console. So I'm just creating this group and now you can onboard any other users if you want. I already have this user. If you want to just create a, you can create a new users here. And then, so here I am users. You can create another user, let's say TKS Sharma Sandbox. And then, okay. Custom password, auto generated password, that's fine. Next. So, the sandbox user, and this is the permission boundary. So, in the permission boundary, I can just give administrator access. Next. And I just do a create user. So, now I do have two different users. You can see TK Sharma and all. And now, with the help of these users, what you can do is you can actually create a 
access key and the secret key these are the security credentials which we are going to use here we will just create an access key because to access the aws console what you need access key and the secret key and this is how we will do it so access key best practices what, what all you wanted to do with that you are planned to use through the command line just for local code and all i will be using it for the command line and you just choose other tag value okay aws access i mean this console always gets changed i will say done you need to download these access key and secret key otherwise they will be lost and what i will do is so this is just a simple uh, plug and play i will just delete both the users at least i will delete this one so this is how you can create the users on your aws console and uh, now we, we can also talk about all the services so i will be deleting that user because i have exposed some credentials even i will delete this user also so what we are doing here is we created a user group roles policies and all those things if you look at the aws services which we are going to explore if i talk in terms of this what all services we need to access all these things and what we want to do is we want to deploy our applications so what all uh, aws components which we, we, we may need is first of all i mean we may need lot of things but s3 cloud front we will need lambda api gateway and maybe a dynamo db and rds and obviously i am creating all the users to access these resources i am policies roles and all and then we will access all these resources so let's come back to here and we can explore all those things so this is s3 bucket to create s3 bucket we can deploy our simply csr application client side rendered application let's say i wanted to uh, just build a simple bucket and i can host my application from there by enabling the static website hosting then you need to have us create a cdn using cloud front so we have these cloud front cloud front will uh, enable a cdn on all the edge locations we have like there are multiple edge locations spread around all the the planet for, provided by aws so our there, there will be a caching enabled on all the edge locations so whatever the content you are rendered from this like the some your static website or any of your front end website that will be cached and can be fetched uh very fast and then we will talk about the lambda lambda is actually just a functional based you you just write your functions it's like a no serverless uh, we will talk about the serverless aspect which covers the lambda dynamo db api gateway and all those serverless technology we are going to talk about here you just write a plain simple simple lambda functions and those lambda functions are nothing nothing but javascript typescript functions and they will be able to execute your code when you trigger it through the api gateway so we will be thinking about deploying our microservices as a lambda nest js microservices as a lambda so it's all together exploring lot of uh, new things on top of that and then api gateway because you cannot execute you cannot hit the uh, the lambda directly from the outside world uh, you need to have a api gateway which will expose the execution of a lambda so you will hit a api gateway method get put post delete patch and then api gateway will indirectly hit your lambda or any other aws resources and you, you can also talk about dynamo db uh, let's say dynamo db if you wanted to use dynamo db as your database then dynamo db db provides a very nice performance you can create a tables these are like key value pair database no no sql database and it is very nice to have 
uh, we just need to have a partition key and sort key and you can have a database tables it's not a database you just need to create a tables and in this particular region you can create multiple tables there is no concept of having a database in the DynamoDB we will talk about that and uh, what else we have cloud formation through the AWS CDK whenever we are doing AWS AWS CDK synth your stack actually converted into a cloud formation template and then that template will be populated inside your uh, AWS and it will create all the resources so once we do AWS CDK deploy we will see what cloud formation template has been generated and what all resources has been created for that so a lot of things to explore actually CloudWatch we will use to see the logs so all these are actually the developer tools or developer components we are talking about CloudWatch, CloudTrail uh, if you talk about you can actually look into a basic fundamental thing about AWS what all components are these AWS components are divided into the different sections like compute, storage in storage we may use RDS relational database and we can just use some RDS instance to connect to uh, our Node.js services and we can store our some of the tables there so database, compute, uh, AR, VR, analytics, all these are the different sections in which all these are divided. Like if you talk about compute, these are the compute where which contains EC2, Elastic Beanstalk, Lambda and all, which is talking about execution and processing. When we talk about the database, it's all about storage. What all different ways in which we can store our data using RDS, using Elastic Cache, DynamoDB and all. Then we have a container solutions, ECS, Kubernetes and all, analytics. How we can do analytics of the data, cloud search and then we have cost management which is talking about the billing, cost explorer and all, developer tools. These are all the, the tools which you can use to like creating a repository, building the pipeline, code commit, code build, code pipeline. This I used to, I, I worked on them but here we will be using GitHub and GitHub CI github actions to deploy our application and this is pretty much i mean you can explore all these once you have an account for this storage there are like this is the real storage which talks about storing our data in the s3 glacier or elastic file system aws backups all these components if you talk about the tabular or sql databases then these are the different storage medium in terms of the different databases Okay, like Amazon Aurora, which is also popular, we can think of using it, but we will be using stick to the RDS Postgres and this is how we are going to work on it. So, let's not delay our stuff. What you need to have a AWS console and you need to have one administrator user, MFA enabled on the root account and the, the another administrator user, MFA should be enabled on both and you should be accessing the AWS console using your uh, administrator user but before that what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the administrator user access key and secret key which are same every time instead of that what we can do is I'm thinking to create a AWS organizations so let's say this is our AWS console and AWS organizations helps us to organize our our stuff inside multiple accounts let's say in big organizations what they can have is they can have a billing account they can have a finance account a developer accounts where they are actually working on the applications so here i wanted to just orchestrate and make you familiar with this so we'll create a multiple aws account at least the dev and the production and on dev account and we can just uh, log in through the sso and we can get the access key and the secret key and the token and using that we will be accessing the AWS resources this is how we are going to go forward so first we will explore AWS organizations what we need first of all we need uh, we need some mechanism to access AWS uh, services for that we need a AWS access key and a secret key either you can just go to your IAM and create a new access key and secret key and just download it and keep using it but I wanted to use it in a different way we will create AWS organizations and from there you can uh, create your AWS access key and a secret key for a particular organization that keeps changing because it expires so we will be safe on that side so stay tuned and let's see that in the next video AWS organizations